A new movement is happening to revitalize the LA River with life. Yeah, but as KKL News meteorologist Marina Jurica shows us, the recent wildfires have put the progress at risk. Amid the concrete flood channels, rare green pockets within the LA River are proving essential, not just for the wildlife, but the city's resilience. These natural spaces are helping LA adapt to a hotter, drier, and more unpredictable future. It's really critical for us to understand that the river is LA's origin story. LA is where it is because the river is where it is. Long before the freeways and skyscrapers, the LA River sustained the Tongva people and Spanish settlers. Today, it faces threats from pollution to climate change. Our rivers are 10 million years old, and all of that life in this special environment has persisted through that. We're not trying to stop change. We're just trying to acclimate and moderate the pace of change. Southern California's wildfires are a stark reminder of this changing climate. Post-fire runoff carries toxic metals and carcinogens into the river, threatening water quality for millions. Those extreme fires have become more extreme, more frequent in California. When fires burn cities and impact homes and communities, the impact to the river lasts a long time. Heavy metals like lead, zinc, copper, things that don't degrade, don't leave our systems, can enter our food chain, can make our beaches unswimmable, our water undrinkable. This is the Sepulveda Basin, one of the only stretches of the Los Angeles River that looks like a real river. This area thrives with greenery and wildlife and year-round flowing water. And this is all due to reclaimed water. It's a success story for river revitalization, offering kayaking, fishing, and nature walks. But a few miles downstream, it's a completely different picture. Most of the LA River looks like this, a man-made flood channel designed to move water out of the city as quickly as possible. But efforts are underway to turn these concrete walls into green spaces that provide much needed environmental benefits. But the beautiful thing about natural infrastructure like a floodplain or a healthy forest is that in many ways it maintains itself. So in that way, we can then then take the money we would have spent to maintain gray infrastructure and we can invest in other places where it's really needed. We know that trees clean the air and regulate temperature. They make things cooler, more pleasant. Having a green ribbon of corridor going through the river, it makes everything better. Over one million people live within a mile of the LA River. Neighborhoods with more parks see lower asthma rates and fewer heat related illnesses. Restoration isn't just about water, it's about community health and climate adaptation. I don't think that most people understand the connection between the river and climate or the way that a healthy, green, thriving river can impact the climate. Notice the nature. It's not something you get in your car and drive far away to do. It's right there and take time to notice it. Your rivers are really, I like to say they're like umbilical cords. They're how the land and the ocean feed each other. And so by keeping that connection in place, we slow down and mitigate some of these extreme changes that we're seeing. Community education is key to the river's future. With continued restoration, more sections of the LA River could look like the Sepulveda Basin, lush, thriving, and full of life. But as climate change accelerates, the fight for the river's future is far from over. By reconnecting with the river through education and advocacy, agencies like Friends of the LA River are helping shape a future where the next generation not only inherits a healthier river, but know how to protect it. All right, glad to see they're putting in that effort. We have the LA River right, right <laughs> outside our station, ladies, right? We get a view of it every day. We so. do, we get to walk by. <laughs>